Knock, knock. An unexpected visitor on a quiet Sunday morning, and when I opened the door, I found myself face to face with Maddie, my ex-wife. Her hesitant voice and pleading eyes betrayed an unspoken desperation. We need to talk, she insisted. Reluctantly, I let her in, bracing for the storm that was about to unfold. What followed were shocking revelations about a secret child and a past that refused to stay buried, forcing me to confront my demons and make life-altering choices. A knock on the front door startled me. Initially, it sounded hesitant and unsure. Furthermore, it was early on a Sunday morning before 8 o'clock o'clock. Additionally, everyone I was close to already had a key to my apartment. It was peculiar, but it could be significant. Therefore, I decided to open the door. The sight of the slender, attractive blonde woman standing on my doorstep left me utterly stunned. Hello, James. It's Maddie, she said. Maddie, my ex-wife. Maddie, whom I despised. My heart rate increased, but I attempted to maintain composure. Maddie, I never expected to see you again, I replied. I know, but we need to talk, she said. We should have had this conversation a long time ago. How did you find me? I inquired. I followed you from your mother's house. I remembered that you usually visit her on Monday evenings. It wasn't easy for me to gather the courage to knock on your door, she explained. She smiled, but it was a feeble smile. She appeared uncertain, which was uncharacteristic of her, yet undeniably determined. May I come in? She asked. What do you want, Maddie? I pleaded. Please, James, give me five minutes and then I'll leave, she requested. I let out a dramatic sigh, as that had always been the extent of my resistance to Maddie's demands. I closed the door and followed her into the living room. She seemed worried, unusually so, and I had no inclination to assist her. So, what do you want? I asked. Maddie's azure eyes quickly scanned the room, searching for clues. However, there were few personal belongings as the apartment was still new, and the bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchen, and office were still being organized. She glanced meaningfully at the sofa, but since I didn't invite her to sit, she chose to remain standing. She turned to face me. Could you offer me some tea or coffee? She asked. You're not a guest, Maddie. Just say what you need to say, I replied. How are you, James? Is it true? She inquired. I chuckled. Why do you care? I questioned. I love you, James. I always have, she confessed. And that's why you continuously cheated on me with Tom. I read, and did you not consider sharing this information with me prior to our wedding? It never crossed my mind. I still had lingering feelings for him. He enlisted in the military. I haven't had any contact with him for 14 months. And I fell in love with you. Yet you continued to have a physical relationship with him whenever he returned to town. It started a few weeks before our wedding and continued for three whole years while we were married. Goodness, Maddie, you never let go of him, even after pledging your loyalty to me. All of this came to light. The detectives uncovered everything during the divorce proceedings. At least she had the decency to avoid eye contact. What is it that you want, Maddie? I want my husband to come back and restore our family. Your ex-husband and I will not reconcile. You destroyed our family, Maddie. I never wanted a divorce. You abandoned us and refused to communicate with me. I've been trying to talk to you for two years. I have nothing to say to you, and there is nothing you could say that I would want to hear. You wanted both Tom and me. I wanted to be with you. I just wanted him occasionally as well. I won't participate in this game. You never made a choice between us. So I made the decision for you. Upon hearing these words, tears glistened in Maddie's eyes. I don't claim to understand her, but the kind of relationship she desired would have destroyed me if I had agreed to it. Everything led up to this moment. Your child needs you, James. My head began to throb and I could barely think as blood rushed to my face. Beth is not my child. She belongs to Tom. This revelation came up during a custody hearing. It seems to me that we could find a solution together. You see, Beth, I know you love her dearly, but I'm not referring to Beth. We have a son. I named him Jimmy. The roar in my head seemed to intensify, though I didn't think it was possible. I don't recall how I managed to remain standing because I have no recollection of the next few minutes. My mind simply retreated to process this new blow. When I regained my composure, I laughed bitterly. I've witnessed this scenario before, Maddie. We're going to have a baby. Oh, James, you will be the best father in the world. 
Maddie tearfully confessed. Only it was Tom's child, not mine. But it's true. I didn't realize I was pregnant when you served me with divorce papers. When I didn't get my period, I attributed it to stress. By the time I realized I was pregnant, we had already finalized everything, and Tom and I were planning our future together. So what part of your vision for the future led you here? I am here because I love you. I dismissed her sentiment, stating, Your actions towards me have contradicted such claims. Her tears flowed earnestly, yet with Maddie, discerning authenticity was often challenging. Jimmy needs his father, and Beth misses you terribly, as do I, she implored. Beth was not yet two years old when we parted ways. She has spent more time without me than with me, and you could have sought me out any time after I relocated. What is truly unfolding, Maddie? I inquired, my gaze piercing. With a downcast gaze and tears streaming down her lengthy lashes, Maddie confessed, Tom departed several months ago. His whereabouts are unknown, and he declared he would never return. Why? I pressed. Maddie hesitated before revealing, he couldn't reconcile with the fact that Jimmy is your son. Suppressing a malevolent grin, I remarked, Well, then you made a grievous choice. She pleaded, Please, James, I beseech you. I love you. Our children adore you. We are meant to be a family. We belong together. Seriousness etched on my features, I queried, Who is listed as the father on Jimmy's birth certificate? Maddie sobbed before whispering, Tom, it appears you are seeking your husband in the wrong place. I concluded firmly. Her desperation intensified as she insisted, No, please, James, I genuinely love you. You are the only husband I desire, the sole one I ever wanted. I swear it. Witnessing Maddie's anguish, her contorted expression and heavy breaths punctuated by sorrowful sobs, I grappled with the urge to offer solace. Yet she appeared utterly bereft, devoid of the dynamism that initially captivated me, replaced by a despondent and desperate demeanor. Though her agony threatened to fracture my resolve, I found myself strangely unaffected by my own pain. The sound of the key turning in the front door lock mercifully interrupted our fraught exchange. I turned around, feeling a sense of relief wash over me, and a smile of anticipation graced my face. As expected, as the day transitioned into night, the door swung open, revealing a slender figure with dark hair, dressed in yoga pants and a puffy jacket. In her hands, she held a bag of baked goods and a cardboard tray with two paper cups, each with a lid. This is your home, I said, my smile widening. Sally returned the gesture with a bright smile, but her expression changed when she noticed Maddie and looked at me with confusion. Honey, this is Maddie, I introduced. Realization dawned on Sally, causing her lips to press together firmly before forming a cold smile that didn't reach her expressive, dark eyes. Hello, Maddie. I've heard a lot about you, Sally greeted, her tone polite. Maddie nodded, her eyes widening before narrowing into slits. She could only manage a nod, her body trembling with sobs. Maddie rushed past us, leaving the door ajar. I carefully closed it behind her. Are you okay, honey? Sally asked, her gaze penetrating mine as she lightly touched my cheek. To be honest, I'm a little scared. I knew I would see her again someday, but I never imagined it would be like this. What does she want? I confessed. Reconciliation. Tom ran away, and she claims I'm her son's father, I explained, a sense of worry creeping into my voice. Oh no, James, could this be true? Sally questioned, her concern evident, quite possibly. When it became clear that she wouldn't give up on Tom, I swiftly filed for divorce. We had some money, and I gave her everything she wanted just to get her to sign. It's possible she was pregnant without knowing it, I revealed my voice tinged with regret. What are you going to do if this is true? Sally inquired, her eyes searching mine for answers. Taking the tray and bag from Sally, I placed them on the kitchen island. I unbuttoned her puffy jacket and hung it in the hallway closet before embracing her. I kissed Sally, savoring the softness of her lips against mine. What we're going to do is what we've always done, my love. We'll do the right thing. You taught me that, I reassured her. If I am this boy's father initially, I was filled with despair, irritable, distrustful, and quick to react to even the smallest triggers, whether they were real or imagined. Sally embraced my wounds and demonstrated daily that I could confide in her completely. She showed me that I was deserving of love and that I could truly experience it. 
Relying on Sally's kindness, patience, and unwavering love in the face of my most self-destructive tendencies, we built a passionate and enduring partnership. My affection for this woman knows no bounds. Furthermore, I remarked as I gently caressed the noticeable baby bump that had been present for a few weeks, we have something of our own that will soon demand our undivided attention. Sally responded with another one of her affectionate smiles. By the way, both your child and I are quite famished. Where did you place the buns and tea? We shared a laugh, clasped hands, and made our way to the kitchen. Remember to subscribe to our channel so that your second chef doesn't deceive you. And feel free to continue listening to the next story because this tale pales in comparison to what lies ahead.